Hello, welcome in. Welcome in, Saints. Good evening to you all. Where is Lady Marcia? Amen. Good to see you, Holy oh God. Good to see you. Wow, this is amazing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is doing big things for the woman of God. I bless God for her and to see that that's taking her. I see Demetria Dawson is on. Praise the Lord. And there are a few others that are on today. We had an amazing session at uh, the studio today. And uh, literally we had people waiting for us at the studio. <laughs> After the studio, um, wanted to get the dreams deciphered and wanted to talk about dreams. And then people are, people are excited about dreams. And they want to know what is happening, you know. And it was, it was good to see a very good friend of mine that didn't know that I was teaching, uh, um, you know, on dreams and, and what have you. And we've agreed to meet tomorrow to discuss some dreams. Hallelujah. Blessing to all of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad therein. Quickly, quickly, can you just share it, like, comment, and what have you. Amen. Let us know where you're from. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. I give you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Luke 19. Uh, Luke, sorry, 10 and 19. Luke 10 and 19. I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the adversary and nothing shall by any means hurt you. This scripture is so powerful because it is letting you know that no matter who is coming against you, I don't care if the person is a serpent. <laughs> Do you know some serpents? All right, that are around. Do you know some scorpions that are around? Amen. Both physically and spiritually. That means that none of them will be able to, 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 to have any authority over you or have the victory. You will trample over them. But many people, they don't really understand what the scripture means. It means that any one of these dead spirits, any one of these spirits of death, yes, scorpions are spirits of death. All right? Snakes. If they bite you, they are what? They're death. They're dead. The venom can kill you. Some of their some of their speaking can kill you. There are some people that are speaking death on you. I I spoke with a lady yesterday and she told me about how someone was talking about uh, me so very badly and saying these negative things and the person went on to say how they hate me and how they hate this and they hate that and, and this and that. It's amazing how God will let you find out exactly what people are saying against you. But you have to love him anyhow. But you see, that was a spirit speaking through the individual. That was a demon speaking through the individual. Amen? Because we showed, we showed the individual truth, and we loved them, and we, we blessed them, and we were there for them. And they're going through so much problems. But see, people always have a problem with you for whatever reason. If you are not being what they want you to be, or they can't control you or manipulate you, then it's a problem. See, when you tell the truth, and you call out what it is, then there's a problem. Then all of a sudden you are not you're not the man of God they want because what happens is they want to do their own thing. But if you look at their past, you'll find that this is a pattern with them everywhere they go. All right? They they're constantly doing this. So what happens is when the scorpion and the sting of those words were sent out, Amen. The Bible says that here's what it says Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you that means that this individual and whoever else and you too whoever else is speaking about you assassinating your character stinging you from behind the scene stinging you in different ways speaking ill of, about you talking about you the bible says here, here's what it says i give you power to trample upon that serpent and upon that scorpion in other words not the individual but the spirit behind the individual are speaking. The spirit behind the individual. Some people don't even know that they're talking about God's anointed. 
and they're doing his prophets harm. But God says, touch not. All right. So what happens is women are on man of God. They're speaking against your marriage. Then the individual went on to say, I don't see how 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 he, him and his wife are still together. See, that's a problem. That means that this, this person is getting very personal. When it's like that, though, people already decided in their mind that they've been coming against your marriage. You never know who's coming against your marriage. You never know who's coming against your destiny. You never know who's coming against your future. You don't know. And see, God allowed that individual to say to people, and the person is someone we minister to and we help so much. And he said, man of God, I couldn't believe what this individual was saying and talking. I said, are they crazy? Are they crazy? Are they out of their mind? You know, because they were saying some nasty things. I said, you know, woman of God, they said nasty things about Jesus. As a matter of fact, they said he was doing the miracles by what? The prince of demons, Beelzebub. Let me tell you something, guys. When you step out in God, when you decide to do something for God, when you decide to walk and stay line and be right and, 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 and help people and destroy yokes and set people free from all over the world, all right, the enemy will raise up people right in your midst who you've helped. It ain't people who you never helped. It's people who you helped. It's people who you was there for. I'm telling you right now, you guys know what I'm talking about. You've been there for people. You've been there. It, it, it wouldn't have mattered if they were not with you, all right, <laughs> if they were strangers. But these are people that come from among you. That's what the Bible says. They, they, came, uh, they came from among us, but they were not with us, all right? They were not with us. They went and they spread rumors and lies. There are people that are spreading rumors and lies about you at this very moment. Some people wonder why, why their business can't go, why their, why their, why their uh, uh, ministry can't take off the way it should take off. Amen? Because there are those that are among you went out and spoke about you like a dirty dog. But can I tell you, can I tell you, there are some people in your family, even your family, that have spoken about you like a dirty dog and declared and said uh, that you will never make it, you will never amount to nothing. You will never be nobody in life. You will never amount to nothing. You ain't going to come to nothing. As a matter of fact, you will prosper and you will come to something over my dead body. Do you know there are people that are making pledges right now? As I live and breathe, there are people that are making pledges right now about you and about your life. And you're wondering why you feel like you're in a cage. You wonder why you feel like you are in an invisible wall and you can't move forward. You wonder why there's... Uh, depression, you wonder why you're always bucking up in the cobwebs, you wonder why you're dreaming about certain things, it's because of what is being spoken behind your back, and they are pretending to be your friends, and some of them are outrightly collaborating with these people, and they are listening to those people, and instead of they correcting those, those persons, say, you know, I don't know the man of God to be that, or the woman of God to be like that, I, I, you know, that's not the truth, all right, let's get it real, that's not my experience. They will run on and run on and run on. But sometimes God has to let you know it's not your mind. God has to let you know that the weapon will form, but it shall not prosper. I cancel and curse every spoken word of negativity and evil by serpents and by scorpions and the spiritual, the spiritual, be, the spiritual beings that are motivating individuals to be bitter and resentful and to be mean and to be hideous towards you, even though you've helped them. Those that are in collaboration, they are the children, they are the seed of the serpent. They are the seed of the serpent, and the seed of the serpent shall be exposed. There are people, even as you are on your job right now and doing what you're doing, they resent you, hallelujah. They resent the fact that you are shining. They resent the fact that you're doing something positive. They resent the fact that you are be, uh, being the agent of change in your neck of the woods. Do you know that people right now have a problem with you simply because God is elevating you? And yet, if they knew your story, they would not resent your glory. There is someone sitting down right now saying, saying right now, everything they have, they can lose that right now. I guarantee you they can lose that. I, I Watch, watch that, watch. I get it, I get it, I get it six months. You know that people who right now resent that. I don't care if it's an ex or a, or an ex-wife or ex-husband or an ex-employee. There are even ex-churches. Do you know? Literally, literally, I know of a church, a church that was cursing an individual and holding prayer chain against their life. The person came to me running for their dear life. They, they were having the, the person said, "I can't do this no more." They had to go and tell the person, "I can't do this." You know that person ain't doing nothing. Why are we praying against this person? Why are we and the, and the prayers. The prayers were prayers that were, I mean, really defamation. It wasn't nothing godly about that. 
and they were praying because the person left the ministry. All right, and they were literally praying prayers against the individual. Anybody that's praying prayers against you, contrary to the will of God, may that tongue be silenced. May that prayer be stopped in the name of Jesus. May it return, even right now, to the ground, null and void. You hear me? May it not prosper at all. I'm telling you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What was meant to kill you will cure you. You hear me? What was meant to kill you will cure you. Because they've, they've discovered they've discovered that you are moving in God. They've discovered that you are making a change. They've discovered that you've decided to stop what you're doing and serve God in all your ways. There are some people right now, because you're not doing what they want you to do, how they want you to do it. They have taken an occasion to stop speaking to you. Some of your close friends, no matter how much you email them, how much you message them, how much you reach out to them, they are silent. There are some people, they're seeing your accomplishment, they're seeing your celebration on Facebook, they're seeing some things you're, uh, you know, you're doing, or and they would not, they would not comment on your post. They would not comment on what you put out there, and they know that you're doing things for the kingdom. They can't stand to even say, man of God or woman of God, man, listen, I'm so excited for you because I see what you're doing. Bless the Lord. No, they feel by withholding their comment and they troll everything you do. They watch everything you do, but they will never, they will never, they will never come out and say, good job, woman of God. Good job, man of God. I celebrate with you. Amen. I celebrate with you. But they're watching everything you're doing. They're watching everything you're doing. They're stalking you. They're monitoring you. They are the ones that are keeping tabs and information on you. Hallelujah. But the Lord says in this season to tell them serpents and scorpions, the weapon will form, but it will not prosper. The venom will not take effect. The venom will not take effect. The sting will not pierce my skin. I say the venom will not take effect because we have the cure. We have the anti-venom. We have the anti-venom. And the anti-venom is the blood of Jesus Christ that shall never lose its power. You, my friends, will never fail and fall because the Lord will not allow your enemies to mock you. The Lord will not allow your enemies to triumph over you. Those that are hoping you fall. Listen to what, what the individual saying. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. And I hope, I, I, I can't see how even the marriage still together. That means that those individuals were saying that, my God, why would you say that? But the Lord allowed that individual to say what is in their heart because that's what they're doing. That means they're praying against the marriage. They're praying against the marriage. They're praying against your destiny. And the Lord allowed them just to say what they're feeling. Hallelujah. When they say things like that, know that the Lord will raise up a standard. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard. Hallelujah. There are people that you help. There are people that you minister to. There are people that you love. There are people that you gave your last to. They are literally, literally speaking and desiring and wishing and projecting and working on your destruction. They're working on your destruction. I remember many years ago when I, I happened to get in an argument with, with, with a dispute with an individual. And as the, as the conversation was getting kind of hard because I felt like something was off. I didn't know what it was. But the individual, because we used to be you know, connected in a way. Then they said to me, that's why I curse your business. That's why your business closed down. I said, what? And they said, I said, no, no, but what's that? I said, I, 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 what? They tried to switch the conversation. They said, yeah, I, I cursed the business, and that's why it closed down. That's why you can't make nothing, because I, I closed it. I shut it down. Mighty God. I said, what? And I was so shocked. I couldn't even talk no more, because I was wondering why I was going through all of that situation, and the person was right there along with me saying, you know, it can get better. You know, things can change for you. You know, you, know, you just got to keep praying. Yes, the person was encouraging me. They were God allowed them to speak and say it in their anger. They spoke those words. They are, they are, they are being exposed. Your enemies are being exposed. Those scorpions are being exposed. Those that have been coming against you are being exposed. Hallelujah. God right now is exposing your adversaries and your enemies. God is turning the tables around for you in this season. God is breaking the backs of the adversary. God is destroying those that have been trying to destroy you. God is saying in the season, I will elevate you. I will lift you up in the presence of your adversaries. I will take you to another dimension. They will watch you prosper. Those that have been coming against you, you know there ain't nothing wrong with you. You know ain't nothing really wrong with your body. Yet the doctors can't find nothing. They're treating and doing this and doing that. Yet they can't find nothing. Because they have been attacking you spiritually in your body. Because the stinger of the scorpion 
has made us mar because someone who you disagreed with, someone who you corrected, someone who you parted ways with, they didn't just leave you just like that. They literally, literally sat down and decided that over their dead body, are you going to make it or see and live to see this thing called life? They are making your life miserable. They're trying to torment you. But the Lord shall raise up a standard against those that are trying to fight you and trying to make you not experience the living God. God will take care of you. God will elevate you. God is in your corner. God is working it out. Glory be to God. For God will do this thing for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. God is about to turn your situation around. God is about to give you the next of your adversary. The very ones them who are coming against you. The Lord is saying they will come to you and they will have to apologize. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at you right now and I'm declaring this prophetically. They will come and apologize to you because you are the one that God has ordained for such a time as this and you will achieve. You will achieve your potential called life. Amen? Yes, you will, you will achieve your potential called life. God has put you here for a certain amount of years to achieve a certain amount of things. And yet, they have the temerity, they have the gall, they have the, the, uh, the audacity to stand against what God is doing in your life. Amen? And try to stop it. Trying to fight it. Trying to break your spirit, break your will. Many people are going through what I call, what I call generational trauma. Amen? In every generation, the enemy is raising up scorpions and serpents to fight against the people of God. But right now, God is turning it around for you. God is removing, thank you, Jesus, all of the poison that they try to inject in your system. That's why your dreams are strange. That's why your visions are strange. That's why you feel you're being oppressed. That's why you feel your mind sometimes is coming, is coming the same. You know, Lady Tommy, she said, Prophet, my mind is coming apart at the same. She said, I don't know how long I can hold my mind to get up. My mind, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Thank you, Jesus. And I said, woman of God, I said, you in good company. I said, because, because whenever you decide to do something for God and you're doing it right and you're passing through the veil and you're coming up higher, the enemy will have an occasion to have people to pull you down. He will raise up people who have problems with you to pray against everything you're doing. I said, don't worry about it, uh, woman of God. God is going to set you free. God is pushing you into purpose. She didn't even recognize it, but God has taken it into her ministry. And the enemy is trying to pull her apart. This is a this is a very powerful prayer warrior. Yes, very powerful prayer warrior. But God is about to fight that battle. She's fighting battles on several fronts. You know, the money acting funny. They strip her of her job. The husband acting weird and doing weird things are coming against her. The very people who are in her household, the very people who are supposed to be her, uh, her strength, be a backbone, is fighting her. Can you imagine the very person that's supposed to be there supporting you is fighting you and trying to destroy everything you're doing. And at the same time, you're trying to balance this and you're praying for them, but yet they're, yet they're doing everything else to help you. They're trying to pull you apart, rip you apart, and you're saying, God, what is happening? God, what is happening in my life right now? Oh, God, I need you to help me. God, I need you to help me. I'm looking at you right now, and I'm seeing right now, woman of God, girly Christian, the Lord said to tell you in this season that he's turning things around. And the Lord said, manifestation shall be your portion. And God is saying, I am correcting the things in your home and your house, and I'm turning it around for my glory, says the Spirit of the living God. I am doing this for you. I don't care who's monitoring. I don't care who's watching. The Lord says, I have you encompassed in my hands. The Lord is saying that he has angels all around you. The Lord is showing that healing shall be your portion in every area of your life and your loved ones shall be healed in the name of Jesus. The Lord is saying the sting of the scorpion shall not prevail against you. As a matter of fact, God has said it will be redirected back to those who sent it. Amen? Back to those who sent it because it's not your mail, woman of God. It's not your mail. It's wrong address. Wrong address, wrong mailbox is not mine. I don't receive it. Listen, the enemy is stinging with words. That's why some people, they feel like I, I get sickness in my body. I'm sick in my body. I feel sickness in my body. The enemy said, yeah, see, you can die soon. Then he said, yeah, you see what's happening to you? Yeah, look, look at your eyes are getting dim. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, you ain't got long to live now. And so you begin to entertain these things. You need to rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Healing is your portion, you hear me? Healing is your portion and healing is the children's bread. Amen? You will be healed, you will be delivered, you will be set free. My God, my God, my God, my God. 
you will be delivered. You will be healed. You will be set free. God is turning it around for you. This is for girly Christian right now who's watching. Mighty God. God is shutting down the powers of the wicked one concerning you. Yes, 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 yes. And God is saying the area where you're in is 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 almost is almost over overpopulated with wickedness or witches. Is overpopulated. The area you're in is overpopulated with witches. But the Lord says, in this season, I will raise you up to be a light in that particular area. Amen. I don't care how much they are. They can have as much covens. They can have much as much covens. They can have as much altars as they want. They can raise up as much as much altars as they want. It will not prosper. They are looking at you right now and wondering how you still live in woman of God. They're trying to figure out how you still alive because what they done could kill ten elephants and more. But the Lord is keeping you. They are not your source. When last they pay your rent? Talk about you and say what they want. When last did they pay your rent? When last did they pay your rent, woman of God? When last did they pay your rent? When last did they come and they gave you something to eat or drink? And even if they give you something to eat or drink, you'll need to throw it away. Because even the tender, even the tender mercies of the wicked is cruel. You don't know when they have that thing laced with. As a matter of fact, some of you have eaten from your adversaries. And that's why there's a problem. Because you've eaten. You've eaten of that situation. And that situation was loaded. I'm declaring right now, all of you who've eaten physically and spiritually, from the adversary, vomit that right up right now in the name of Jesus. Vomit up right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command anything you've ingested, you've digested, that has went in your system, whether it's spiritually, whether it's in the dream, I command that thing to be vomited up right now out of your system. Become right now null and void, persona non grata. I command that thing to come out of you right now. Come out of you right now. Everything that they try to feed you, everything they're trying to give to you, whether it's mental, Mental uh, 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 sustenance, yes, because if they could change your mind in certain areas and get you to be manipulated and control you and to be under bewitchment, hallelujah, then they've controlled you. They're feeding you. They may not be feeding you physically like that, but they're feeding you spiritually. Some people, they don't even recognize that this is the time in the season when God says the serpent and the scorpion, that has been camouflaging itself. Hallelujah. The word camouflage is a very powerful word. That means that they are hiding their true nature and they are hiding their true character and their character will and shall be revealed because God is about to do a new thing for you. God is about to turn it around. Those that have been speaking against your destiny, those that have been laying low and hitting you, those that have been preaching and teaching against you, mighty God, the Lord is saying they will watch you elevate. They will watch you prosper. Some of them are going to be shut down. Some of them who want you to get fired of your job, they will be fired themselves. Some of them that want to see you sick, they will become sick themselves because they've touched God's anointed and they've done His prophet's harm. As a matter of fact, some of them need to let you go. They need to loose you. They need to turn you go, turn you loose and let you go. They need to let you go. Every spirit of Pharaoh, every Pharaoh, every Pharaoh demon that's been fighting against your destiny, hallelujah, have to let you go. Mighty God, mighty God. Every Pharaoh, every Pharaoh that does not want to see you succeed, Pharaoh doesn't want you to go and worship God. Pharaoh doesn't want you to have your freedom. Pharaoh wants you to work like a dog until you fall down making bricks and mortar and building their temple to serve their strange gods. Can you imagine? They want to keep you in bondage so you could, you could serve their strange gods and you are using your lifeblood and they are they're keeping you in captivity. Yet they hate the fact that you become numerous and because you're prospering, and they want to kill every male child under the age of two. Everything in your life that you're pregnant with, the enemy's trying to kill. I command that to die by fire in the name of Jesus. It will not touch you. Some of you are pregnant in the realm of the spirit. When I say pregnant, I mean you're pregnant with vision. You're pregnant with goals. You're pregnant with dreams. You're pregnant with ministry. You're pregnant with ideas and concepts that God has birthed into you. But the serpent is trying to strangle it. That's why you have fiber in your body. That's why people have fibroids. People don't even understand fibroids. What is fibroids? Where, 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 where are we getting fibroids from? And 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 endometriosis. That is nothing. That is nothing more. That's nothing more than the seed of the serpent. That is nothing more than the stinger of the scorpion. They plant in spiritual babies. Huh? So whenever the seed of the man touches your womb, it kills it. It kills it. You hear me? And it causes cancer. Nobody can even understand cancer. What is cancer? It does it, it cancer actually hides and pretends and lays low. It's smart and then it continues to move and, and, and kill the cells in your body. 
All it's doing is killing your cells. That's what it does. The cancer is killing you from the microscopic level. It's killing you from the atomic level. And that's what that is. Anything that's messing with you from the microscopic and atomic level and the cellular level, I command it to die right now and loose you. Loose the people of God. Let them go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. People don't even recognize that that's why they can't, they can't conceive or bring things forth. Because the thing that is inside of them is the child of the serpent. The enemy has fed them. The enemy has had intimacy with them. Whether they knew it or not, that's why they developed these things. That's why it got to go. Because even though after nine months, the fiber is still there. It doesn't come out. It stays there. And then a lot of times, even when they take it out, it still wants to hang around and try to regrow. I command all those things to die right now. I command them to let you go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Where are these things coming from? Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Anything that's trying to metastasize and multiply in your life that is not of God, I cancel it right now. Anything that's hiding in your body, any serpent seed, any seed of the cockatrice that's laying low in your body, laying eggs in your destiny, waiting for an appropriate time for it to hatch and come out and eat you from within. Every parasite, every spiritual parasite that is now trying to sting you from within, I command those fibroids, I command those parasites, I command those leeches to die, to die, to die. That's what the leech says in the scripture. Gimme, 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 gimme. Heart of children. Leeches are the five daughters. Gimme, 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 gimme. Just take, 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 take. Every spiritual leech, hallelujah, that is operating against you shall die in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, Walking about seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5 and 8. As a roaring lion. He goes as a roaring lion. He's not even a lion. He is assuming the, he's assuming the form of a lion. He's a pretender. He's a fake. But if he could get you to believe the lie and the illusion. And if he could get you to meditate on the daily. Meditate on the fact that you die. Meditate, meditate on the fact that look at your body. Your body feeling weird. The Lord says, by his stripes you heal. You know, I feel in something in my, in my kidneys, you know. Ah, uh, you know, my, my, uh, you know, I just watched, I was watching the program right now, and they said, this is 10 signs that your kidney is failing. This is 20 signs, that, 20 signs that you're about to die soon. Uh, people are meditating on these things. All right, and so they're believing the lie. Yes, it might seem true in the natural, but I'm telling you, by faith, listen, a person who is of a faith or a higher spiritual knowledge will always seem foolish to someone who have a lower spiritual knowledge, all right, or spiritual intellect. They will seem foolish, but I tell you right now, it's the foolish things of the, of, the, of, of the Spirit of God that will keep you alive. Amen? What sounds more funny and more crazy than when someone takes some mud and spit and put it on your eyes and then tell you, go get your side, go wash? Huh? Go wash your eyes. It seems foolish. But God gave the man a sight. Amen? The woman, the woman with issue of blood, she had to touch Christ's garment. Are you that desperate that you said, God, I can't take this bondage no more? I can't take this what's happening to me. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to get my deliverance. I'm getting my blessing. Yes, she wasn't even supposed to touch people because she's considered unclean. If you have an issue of blood, you don't know. I, I don't know if you know about the, the, uh, the Jewish culture. But listen, they take that thing serious. All right? When a woman was on a cycle, she couldn't even stay in the, in the home. She had to go in a quarter away from the home and tell that it's over. She couldn't touch food. She couldn't cook. She couldn't do nothing. Until that was over because it was considered unclean. Yet this woman, by faith, don't know Jesus. Only heard about him. Because he was a talk of the town. Everybody was talking about him. Because they heard about this new, this new teacher. This new teacher who people are getting healed with. Alright? They're getting healing. They're getting delivered. They're getting set free. She even probably heard about Lazarus being raised from the dead. She said, wow. Wow. If he could do all of that, I don't even need him to pray for me. I don't even need to have faith. I don't even have to go there and activate my faith. Huh? I don't even have to say, oh, your faith is weak. Your faith is weak. Oh, oh your faith is weak. Hmm? I got faith in myself. He ain't going to preach me a sermon. He ain't going to pump me up. He ain't going to give me 10 words and a point. He ain't going to labor for me and pray and lay hands on me and touch me and, and dress me with oil. Sometimes you have to do that to certain people because what on them is so strong, Jesus only knows. If I, if I tell some of the people what I see on them sometimes when they're praying for them, they'll run. And I can't tell them what I see in all the time. I just have to pray for them and cover them uh, with the blood because of some things that's heavy. Amen? That's heavy. And they testify later of how they got delivered and set free. Listen, she didn't need none of that. All she knows of faith. You hear me? She had her faith. She had her faith. She had her faith. They tell, they tell blind Bartimaeus, shut up. 
He says, Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Don't stop your cry because people are speaking against you. Don't stop your cry because they're talking about you. Don't stop your cry because the, 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 the serpent and the scorpion have been uh, speaking negatively against you. Don't allow them to stop your cry. Hallelujah. Don't allow them to stop your cry. Thou son of David, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And they said, shut up, be quiet. And the more they told him to be quiet and shut up, he cried out the louder, the Bible says. Cry out loud before God. Let God know that, God, I need to come out of this situation. My God, if you don't deliver me, I will not be delivered. Lord, send your prophet to me, Lord. Send your apostle. Send your teacher. Send someone to understand what I'm going through. Because everyone who I'm going through, even in my church, they think I'm crazy. They think I'm off the walls. They think I am nuts. They don't understand me. As a matter of fact, some of the people in the church that's attacking me where I go because they're spreading rumors about me. And because I'm going through the situation, they are laughing at my situation. They know it and they are not being merciful. They're not, they're not loving. They're not bringing me and they're not nurturing me in the faith even though I messed up. I made a mistake. I might have stepped up. I might have done some things wrong. But you use that to condemn me. You use that to, to, to talk about me. You use that to beat me down. You use that to throw salt in my wounds. Yet the salt is supposed to be for what? For preservation. You're not preserving me. You're using the salt to throw into my wounds. And it's not preserving my wounds. All you're doing is adding insult to injury. And you're turning me off from the gospel. Oh my God, my God, my God. Salt is a preserver. Salt is what they used to pay the Romans back in the day. That's how they say, is this man worth his salt? Am I paying you the right amount of money? That's where you get the word salary from. The word salary comes from the word salt. The word salary comes from the word salt. Salary, saltery, saltery, salary. That's why the Romans venerated salt. That's why the Bible talks about salt. If you lose your flavor, where will it be flavored again? If you lose your call because of the sting of the scorpion or the, sting, or the, or the venom of the serpent and you don't trample over them, where will you get your salt again? Are you worth your salt? Are you salty for the Lord? Are you preserving people? Yet the salt... By itself is nothing good. But yet, if you take meat, and that meat, you put that in salt, or a bucket of salt, hallelujah, that's where it will preserve that meat. You don't even need a free refrigerator. They didn't have the refrigerator back in the day. They would preserve their meat through what? Through the salt. Salt is a protector. Salt is a preservative. Salt is how you attain the anointing. Are you salty? Or are you losing your salt? Has you become useless, worthless? Are they saying that you're useless and worthless? Who has spoken in your life and called you useless and worthless when you were small? Who was the one that kept hammering in your mind and your brain and telling you you're worthless? Even now that you're old or you're grown, you still feel those things of that, of that childhood trauma that you suffered from a mother, a father, someone in, your, someone in your immediate family that told you you were worthless, you can't do nothing well, you ain't nothing coming out of you. Huh? And you see the enemy still trying to carry on through people. People are still trying to talk about you and label you with mark of rejection and hatred. They try to put marks of rejection and hatred on you so you could so you could find and feel that you're worthless. The devil is a liar. You are of great worth. You are salty. You hear me? You are salty. You are the salt of the earth. You are a, you are a very powerful component in God's army. And God is going to use you mightily in this season. That's why the devil is taking so much time to harass you. If you were not a person of interest, if your star wasn't shining, if your light wasn't shining, I don't care what they say about you. Keep doing good. Keep living for God. Let God finish write your book. All those that have been speaking against you, all those that have been raised up, evil words against your life and your destiny, they will know that at the end of the day that God is with you because they will know that God will favor you right in their midst. God will bless you right in their midst. Some of them, they look at you with cock eye. Some of them look at you like you're crazy. Some of them wouldn't even, uh, they, wouldn't even they wouldn't even so much as hail you. Why? Because they know what they've done to you. When they see you coming, they turn their head the next way. Because they shame. They turn their head the next way. And yet you've not done them nothing. Because in their mind, as far as they're concerned, you are already defeated and you're already dead. And as what they had done to you and said about you, it was supposed to really kill you. But now here it is, you walking, talking, breathing, and prospering too, and elevating. The enemy does not like that because you are now one who's overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of his testimony. I say to those who curse you, bless them. Amen. Bless them that curse you. 
Amen. Even those that despitefully use you, bless them anyhow. Let the Lord take this fight up. Let the Lord take this battle up. Because at the end of the day, you will find that God is going to elevate you in some areas that is going to just blow your mind. Get ready, saints of God. You are coming into the finest season of your life. You're going to see that God is with you. God loves you. God cares for you. And I want to tell you right now, hallelujah, right now, even now, as I'm speaking this word, thank you, Jesus. Get ready for a serious blessing, woman of God. And I'm talking to Chantel Bethel. Hallelujah. Get ready for a serious blessing. Get ready for God to give you direction. Get ready for God to take care of some issues concerning even someone you're praying for. Hallelujah. And to give them open heaven. Because I see, I see scholarships after scholarships after scholarships coming. And the Lord is saying, you don't even have to worry about how it's going to come. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says, even, in, even now, I'm sending my angel ahead of you. Thank you, Jesus. To make a way for that situation. And the Lord is saying, in this season, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you with what I promised to bless you with. I wouldn't even say it. I wouldn't say it on his life. Because you know what they're talking about. Hallelujah. But suffice it to say that God says, woman of God, that you are going to see this thing manifest. You hear me? In short order. For the Spirit of the living God shall raise up a standard for you. And the Lord shall speak for you. And the Lord shall give you, even as I'm speaking right now, He shall give you, He shall give you milk and honey. You hear me? Milk and honey. The Lord is saying, your cupboards shall never be bare. You hear me? Your cupboards will never be bare. And the oil will never run out. You might as well decide to go in the oil business. Because the oil that you're going to have, your hands is going to help many. Your hands is going to bless many. And as a matter of fact, they're going, to, they're going to wonder how you're doing what you're doing. Because they're looking at certain things and saying, how she can make it. There are, things that are, there are things that have been set in motion that the enemy has been trying to fence you in, woman of God. But the fence, the fence they're trying to build shall fall down. It will not stand, woman of God. It will not stand. It will not stand. And even now, even down where you are at your workplace, they'll start up their foolishness again. Even at the workplace, I see them trying to even enact situations around you, woman of God. But the Lord is saying, even as you anoint your place, hallelujah, and as you anoint your surrounding, no evil shall come nigh your dwelling. And the Lord is saying to you, woman of God, get ready for multiplication. This is the Chantel battle. Multiplication shall be a portion. Elevation shall be a portion. The Lord is, the Lord is saying to you, continue to do well, woman of God. Continue to do well. Even now, God is saying, your heart is pure, woman of God. Hallelujah. Your heart is pure. And God is saying, don't worry about how it looks in the natural because God is about to turn it around. God is about to show you what he can do. He's not forgotten you, nor is he slow to do his word. He will perform it. He will do it for you, woman of God. God is showing you that he's raising you up in the family to be that point of contact for everyone. Yes, you're that point of contact. You are that stone that the Lord is raising up, a lively stone. You are that cornerstone, hallelujah, that God is raising up in the family. God is saying, stay the course, stay on the wall, keep on the wall, keep focused, stay the course. God is about to bring you into purpose. God is about to show you exactly what you've been going through and why, because he has you in the palm of his hands. He's the mighty Savior, and he's the everlasting Father to you, woman of God. Get ready, because God has you. In the palm of his hands. For verily, for verily, verily, I said to you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Mark 11 and 23. What you believing in your heart, woman of God, God says, do not doubt. I will bring it to pass. I will bring it to pass. I have brought you this far. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to preserve you. I'm going to finish it for you. I am going to finish it for you. You're going to finish strong. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to enter into the season of completion. Do you know that the enemy doesn't want you to complete certain projects, woman of God? I'm talking to Chantel Battle. The enemy doesn't want you to complete certain things. Right now, they're trying to figure out how you're doing what you're doing right now. I'm telling you right now, woman of God. And they have been busy trying to curse it. And this is coming from family members family members as well. They don't want to see you prosper. They don't want to see you. As a matter of fact, you've been seeing them in your dreams and visions. As a matter of fact, they've been coming in your dreams and visions. God is saying you will complete it. You will finish it. You will finish it in style. You will finish it in favor. The Lord will give you his favor. The Lord will send people to, to help you. God will send the heavenly carpenters to finish off those evil horns that have been raised up against you. 
God is going to cause you to raise your head in the season. The Lord said, continue to do well. Continue to do good. Do not be weary and well-doing. Do you know what we get weary and well-doing? You know, sometimes the enemy is trying to break your spirit when you find out people who you helped and who you ministered to, people who you went uh, overboard with, and even sometimes you did without to help them. When you find out how they've been talking about you and how they've been sabotaging and destroying things around you, it breaks your spirit. Sometimes it's like, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of well-doing. That's why he said it. Do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap. You will reap. Yes. Jesus even said, I'm tired unto death. I'm tired unto death. Who is you? You don't get tired? Yes, we are humans in this body. We are saved. We are sanctified. We go into heaven. All right? But at the same time, we get tired sometimes. Tired of the frustration. Tired of the fight. You know what the lady told me? She said, Papa Peter, I don't want nothing to do with the church no more. I'm tired of the church people. She said, I'm tired. I'm tired of the people of, the people of God. All right? I'm just tired of them. I'm tired of people just mocking me and, and mocking me and mocking this God I have. I'm just tired. I said, woman of God, don't give up. I said, they're only mocking because because they know you under something. Amen? Yes, they're mocking you in the job. Yes, they're laughing at you. Yes, they're trying to make make you look like you, you know, you're foolish. Trying to make you look like, you know, you, 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 you're the office idiot. Don't worry about them because you stand up for your God. And because you might be a little outstanding, that's okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sharon said, did I miss anything? I said, after we cooking. <laughs> that's something, eh? She's cooking and still watching. Praise God. God bless you, Sharon. God bless you. No, you didn't miss anything, and you can you can watch the rerun. <laughs> I'm holding on to I'm holding on by a thread. Jesus help me. And right now, I pray for Chantel Battle right now. God, I, I cover her with the blood of Jesus. All of you, I want you to pray with me with Chantel Battle. We cover her with the blood of Jesus right now. We cover her everything that is not of God that's been trying to sail her and attack her. Every war of attrition that's been sent to weigh her down and wear and wear her out and to oppress her and to keep her down. And to hide the blessings and hide the increase. Lord, I ask that you will restore her strength. God, you will you will empower her. God, you will give her a new a new way of seeing things. You will inspire her. You will encourage her. Father God, you will bring comfort and you will bring Father God edification. In the name of Jesus, we cover you right now. Hallelujah. Every every battle that she's been fighting on four different fronts. She's been fighting a battle on four different fronts. She's been fighting a battle on four different fronts. They've been attacking her in four different ways. Do you know that the multiple altars they raise up against this woman of God? They try to raise up multiple altars against the same woman of God right there. But the Lord is showing that even now there are some people that 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 was connected to her before because they are angry that she she she's probably not there like how she used to. They have been speaking curses against her, and they've been saying things about her that's not good. They've been saying things against her that's not good. May those words fall to the ground, and may they become persona non grata. And may they become useless and null and void over your life, O oh man of God. And we restore and re reinitiate the original plan and purpose of God for your life. And not only that, the substance and the sustenance that is needed for you. I speak into your spirit man right now. I speak into your spirit man right now. God, strengthen your daughter. God, strengthen your daughter. Lord, give her, Father God, a new level of seeing and hearing for you. God, open her eyes, Lord, Father God, to see all the protection around her. Even as you open Elijah's servant's eyes, let us see the great cloud of witnesses around her. Let us see the armies of angels, of horse and chariots that are much more than those that are coming against her. Let us see that she has so much spiritual firepower that's backing her up right now. Even when the enemy makes you feel like your Lord, Elijah, one of the greatest prophets in the Bible, point blank, Old or New Testament, huh? said, I'm tired, take my life. I'm tired, take my life. I'm weary of my life. Take my life. I'm the only one serving you. I'm the only one who is zealous for your cause. He was depressed because of the attack spiritually, because of the great work he's doing. Whenever you are doing a great work for the Lord, the enemy will try to attack you. The enemy will try to bring your name down. The enemy will try to send threats your way. And he ran, he ran, he ran, he ran from the battle. He ran for his life in fear. One of the first level of attacks you will feel when the enemy is attacking you is you will feel a nameless fear. The reason why I say nameless is because you don't know what it is. You just feel anxiety. You feel stress. You feel panic. You feel, oh God, I'm about to die. You feel a a a, a uh, foreboding, a sense of foreboding, a sense of fear. I don't even know what this is, but I know I fear. I can't tell where it's coming from. I don't know who's attacking me. And so you feel a sense of paranoia. Could it be that one? Is it that one? Is it that one? Is it this one? Is it that one? And that where, that's where the enemy is trying to what dislodge you from your prayer life. 
There's some people you've not even prayed in two, three years. Every time you try to pray, you feel like there's a brick wall that's coming against you. You feel like there's a brick wall that's hitting you. You say, God, I can't even pray. Lord Jesus, whenever I try to pray, I have to put on music. All I can do is look at and say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Then I can't, then, I, then after that, you, you, you start to watch TV or you start to surf. <sighs> Hallelujah. Because you know within your heart, thank you, Jesus. You know within your heart and in your spirit, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me, let me turn on this light, guys. Don't go nowhere. Let me turn on this light. Let me see something. I'll be right back. Forgive me. You see how you see how you see how this family of people is? Look at everybody's praying for Chantel. You see how we raised up a family? Yet most of these people I've ne I've never seen them in person. Right? There are many people that are going to dryness in their life, spiritual dryness. They have been sustained, they've been under a sustained attack. Do you know if you've been under sustained spiritual attack, you know that does to your spirit? It wears you out and wears you down. When you've been under sustained spiritual attack from the adversary, that wears your spirit down. It takes the joy of the Lord from you. It causes you to lose your flavor, lose your lose your anointing. Uh, when I say that, when I say that, I mean that it's, you're so worn out, you're so dry. There's a drought and famine in your spiritual life. You lose the joy of the Lord because you've been pulled apart at the same. I want to tell you there's refreshing and recovering. Amen. God is refreshing and recovering all you've lost. Amen. You're smiling. You're laughing. You're saying all the nice things. But spiritually, you felt the dryness in your heart. You even begin to doubt the word that was spoken by the prophets and by God's men. All right. You even begin to doubt that it will ever come to pass because it seems a far off. Yes, that's what the prophet told Elijah. That thing you said is a far off. That thing you said is a far off. They was making fun of, of the prophet, of the prophecy and the, of the word of God, meaning it ain't coming to pass. But the Bible says, Habakkuk, write the vision down and make it plain that those who see it may run with it and tell you, and the word of God shall surely come to pass. I'm saying, God, right now, refocus those people, Father God, that are here watching right now, that have lost their zeal, lost their, their first love. They love you, Lord, and they're hanging on like, like, like uh, Santa said, by a thread. They love you, Lord. They love you. But Father God, the battle has been thick. They've been in the thick of the battle. And they've been fighting battles on several fronts. There have been multiple attacks, multiple incursions. There have been all kinds of guerrilla warfare against your children. And God, they're coming from the job, from the home. It's coming from people. It's coming from situation. It's coming from uh, from spiritual, uh, principal spirits that are fighting them. And Lord, over time, they've, they've been fighting this battle. And they've been worn down. God, give them rest. Give them resurrection. Resurrect their life. Let the resurrected power of your blood and of what you've done, your redeeming work, begin to, Father God, restore them. Restore them. Restore them. Just like with David. David was crying so much that he couldn't cry no more. David men was crying so much they couldn't cry no more. You know this when you can't cry no more? You cry so much you can't cry? You cry. You, you wait for tears to come, but they ain't coming. You make a noise, but ain't no tears coming? You cry. Ah! Oh! And the tears ain't coming no more. You dry up your tear glands. Your tear ducts are dried up. That's how sorrowful you are. All right? Then, on top of that, his men decided that we can make you the scapegoat. We need someone to, we need someone to blame. We can blame you. We can kill you. So his men wanted to kill him. Huh? David had to encourage himself in the Lord. David had to find that deep within the deep. Deep cause of the deep. God is saying, now that you've taken it to that land. Hallelujah. God is saying, now that you've done everything you've done, you've cried a river. You've cried an ocean. And yes, yes, it is what it is. Now I want you to give it to me. Give it to me, says the Spirit of the living God. Yes, they talk about you like a dirty dog. Yes, they scandalize your name. Yes, they're trying to bury you. Some of them already planned your obituary. Some of them already writing a tombstone up because in the realm of the Spirit, they already set the date on the altar for you to leave planet Earth and for you to die. But it shall not happen. You hear me? It shall not happen, says the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Begin to look at the prophecy that God gave you. Go back into your books. That's why I tell you guys, always write down your prophecy. Write down your word. Date it. Then take it and make it into declaration. Then begin to speak it. Begin to bring it and put it before the Lord. 
begin to war with your prophecy and war with your word. That's in times, that is for times like these. Amen. The word that was given to you by the Lord and by his prophets. Amen. Look at it. Read it. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Date it. Remember it. Many times when I was about to walk out of this faith, you hear me? Yes. Real talk. I've been under such oppression and such fire that I was like, Lord, I'm getting ready to leave this thing right now because it looked like I was doing better in the world. All right? That's what the enemy wanted. That's the enemy you now trying to pull me out because every door seemed like it was locked. You hear me? Everything I was doing it seemed like it was locked. And on top of that, they're putting nasty things on me in the paper. Yes, they put nasty stuff on me for, in the paper. These are people who were supposed to be my friends. Even though, you know, they were the competition, they were still friendly, you know. But they took it to the next level where they went really, they hit under the belt. They decided that they could end me. They got together, several of them, several businessmen got together, and they put a nasty article in the paper over my business and life, you hear me? They tried to destroy what God has ordained, you hear me? And it was a blow so severe. I couldn't catch my breath. You ever had something hit you so hard you couldn't catch your breath? It's like, and everybody's coming to me and bringing me a copy of the paper. I kept remembering you prophesying to me. And I kept telling God, you are not a liar and you are a man of God. You're not a liar. So you better start to unlock these prophecies in Jesus' name because I'm tired. Yes, that's good, woman of God. That's good. The Lord says, put him in remembrance. All right? Put him in remembrance of his word. All right? Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. All right? Let us reason together. You bring those words to the Lord. You hear me? You bring those to the Lord. Come and sit before the Lord. All right? If you can't pray, then start to moan. If you can't moan, then begin to jump. If you can't jump, begin to dance. If you can't dance, begin to wiggle your head. If you can't wiggle your head, begin to wiggle your toe. You got to do something. If you can't wiggle your toe, then wiggle your nose. Wiggle your ears. Wiggle your eyes. Whatever. But do not stop praying until God restore your prayer life. Amen. Begin to say, God, I'm, I, I'm, I'm asking you for recharging. I need to recharge. Have you ever had your cell and your cell keep going down and you don't have a charger? <laughs> and the thing keep going down and keep going down and keep going down. And you say, Lord, I, 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 I weigh out here in the boondocks. And listen, I am my last bar. Lord, I need you to recharge me up. <laughs> huh? Sometimes you just got to say, God, I just can praise you today. I can't pray no more. I find it hard to pray. They're pressing me. Then some of you, you, you need to pray outside your house because the oppression and the war that's coming from is coming from people around your area. So you have to come out your house. Some of you find out when you get in your car and you start to pray. You could pray. You could pray. You could pray that the heavens open. But when you come back in the house or you come back in the place that you're surrounding, you can't pray no more. Why? Because that means that the attack is, is centralized in your area. So you got to use strategy. You got to say, Lord, take me out of this house. Or, Lord, get me away. Let me get out of the house. Let me go for a walk. Let me go for a jog. Let me go for a run. Let me go for a drive. And as you're coming out of the house and driving out of the house, you'll find that Jesus look, look like, ah, I mean, you literally could pray like never before. So that means your atmosphere has been under attack and they are targeting you. Chances are you living, you're living around people who are praying against you and, and praying and trying to create, trying to create a barrier and fighting your prayer life. That means you're living around witches or warlocks. You will not see them. Like that. As a matter of fact, they may be very, very friendly and cordial to you, but you don't know what they're doing in the night season. You don't know what altars they raise and erect in. You don't know what altars, you don't know what idols they have that they're perpetuating and praying to. That's why if God don't show you who your adversaries is in the season, it will be hard for you to know. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When God is about to do something new for you, the enemy will raise an occasion to try to stop it. Amen? When God is about to celebrate you, the enemy will find reasons for you to be sad and to be miserable. When God is about to bless you, you will find that the enemy tries to make you feel even depressed, even in your blessing. God bless you, the new car. You only had no car. You was walking. God give you a new car. You still feel depressed. You wonder who could take the car from you. You wonder who could hit you now. God just give you a new house. You never had no home. You're living in the dumps, all right? You're still depressed because of that now because you're wondering, oh God, how I can fix the house up? How I can do this? How I can do that? You need to give God glory, give Him praise. You need to thank the Lord for what He's done for you. Hallelujah. Amen. I just was praying. Uh, I, I, I'm talking to a guy and I prayed. I remember ministering to him and I told him, as a matter of fact, I told him last year. I said, listen, man. He said, you know, he said, prophet, you don't know. He said, everybody looking at me and they think I'm doing so well. They see me dress up, they see me driving a nice car, but I live in my office. I'm living in my office, man. You know, I'm living here right in my office. People don't know. They only see the, they only see the shine. They don't know what I'm going through. And I told him right in the office, I said, listen. I said, you can get a house. I said, God's about to give you and bless you with this home. And God's about to turn it around for you. And he looked at me like I was talking to the moon. 
you know, because sometimes those things seem afar off. You know, well, I how I can get in a situation? I can hardly take care of what I take care of now. And now you tell me, but I can get a house. But I see him look at me. I say, do you believe that? He said, yeah, I do. I do. I do. I, I, thank you, man. I receive it. I receive it. That's all. That's all God wanted him to say, that he receive it. And I say, okay, well, God bless you. And I said, we'll talk later. And then we did what we had to do in terms of the business and transaction. And I said, listen, man, God bless you. All right. And last week, was it last week or this week, I was going to an appointment. And I saw this guy walking. And so I picked him up. I said, hey, what's going on, man? He said, listen, I need you to take me someplace. I need to do uh, something, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I said, okay, no problem. Let's go. I said, how you been, man? He's, he's telling me this and that and that and that. And so he's asking me certain things. And he just was chit-chatting. And so as I'm driving him back to this place, I say, oh, okay. I said, maybe he slept by someone. Or maybe he house what? You know, he house sitting. You know, house sitting. And, uh, you know, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> so I say, I say, yeah, okay. I say, man, um, so anyhow, see you later. I said, uh, you know, I said, uh, you know, you house it? And I said, you know, see a car park here. He said, no, man, I own this house now. He said, I just took possession of this house. I'm the owner, I'm the new owner of this house. <laughs> this house is in a very nice area. This house is right along the seaside. You hear me? Look what God has done. From sleeping in the car, sleeping in the garage, sleeping in uh, his office, God has blessed him with a beautiful home right on the beach. It's right on, on a nice area. Amen? A nice area. Look what God has done. Look what God has done to that young man. And God will do it for you. He didn't see where it's coming from. He didn't see the funds. But the Lord put this in his hands. Amen. And however God did it, it's God's business. Amen. Sometimes God will cause you to meet someone who meets someone who meets someone by chance and you happen to meet them. And they said, okay, call this person right here. And they talk to this person. They say, you know what? We have something available right here, you know. And the person's going away. And they said, if you could come up with this amount and blah, 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 blah. And before you know it, you're in possession of the home. You got the papers in your hand. And you possess the house, and now you are. He says, Man, you know, I get ready to renovate this and fix this up. I say, Man, listen, you go ahead, brother. You go ahead. You go ahead. You could park your own car in your own garage. You're no longer living in your, in your office. Amen. You're no longer living there. You have your own possession. You are now one who is becoming stable. Stable. That vagabond curse is broken over your life. That spiritual vagabond curse is broken over your life. Listen. Satan does not have the power to take your life. There are six ways people on this planet die. One, they die by their own hands. They die by the hands of another. By fearing death. For the things which I greatly feared has come upon me. And that which I was afraid of has come to me now. Job 3 and 25. By breaking natural laws. By succumbing to the aging process. Or by sickness or disease. I mean, there are six ways that men die, but Satan cannot take your life. But he will, he will, he will try to convince you. He will, yes, hey, Kenny. Come back in, guys. Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me? Hallelujah. Can you guys hear me? All right. Nisa says she can hear me. Shabby says she can hear me. Listen. This fool just shut down just now. It just shut out completely just now. Come back in, guys. Come back in. Give me, give me about five more minutes. Five more minutes. Five more minutes, guys. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Phyllis, maybe you can hear. Shanta say loud and clear. Listen, anybody that wants you to leave this planet before your time, they shall take your place. Every Haman that wants to see you put in a pit and die before the time, God will not allow it. As a matter of fact, I'm declaring and decreeing this to you right now. Every satanic assignment against your life from serpents and scorpions and from poisonous, poisonous creatures that have been trying to inject you with their poison, with their evil, with uh, their contamination, I ask that Father right now, everyone who's listening to me under the sound of my voice, 
that they will see the hand of God moving right now for them. God, I thank you for sucking out all the venom out of their life, all the venom. Anybody wants you to be bitter, mean. Anybody wants you to be bitter or mean. Lord, hold on to unforgiveness in your life. I command that power to die by fire in the name of Jesus. You will, you will come out of this. You will recoup what you've lost. Some of you, you've experienced tremendous losses. And you're saying, God, where's my harvest? God, where is, where is the God of Elijah? Where's the God of Elijah? Where's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord? God, I've done these things at your bidding. Lord, I've done these things, and yet I seem like I've, I've bucked up. I've, I've hit a, bl a brick wall. I, everywhere I go, I'm being blocked. And Father God, I'm being, I'm being followed. I'm being chased. I'm being stalked. There's spiritual gang stalking. Lord, I, I, my finances is acting funny. There's holes in my pocket. And God, I need you to give me, Lord. Give me one strategy, Lord. One strategy, Lord, Father God. Give me one strategy that no man has. Give me a need that only I can fulfill. And God, give me the franchise of fulfilling that right now. Give me one problem that only I could solve. And I have the key to it, Lord. God, so I can, I can be of, of work and worth and service to you. But also, God, for you to make a way for me. God, that I will have the last say. Because there are people that are trying to undermine you, trying to undercut you. They're trying to take away your livelihood. They're trying to stop bread from coming to your mouth. They're trying to take bread away from your life. That's why you have to say, God, give me. Give me, Lord Father, God, one strategy that my enemies cannot stop me or my enemies can't even figure out how I'm moving. Let my enemies be blind concerning how I'm moving. Lord, even the cat that's watching me, even the bird that's watching me. A gentleman just sent me a picture. He said, man, no matter what I do, this bird keeps showing up in my yard. And this bird is right there. He even sent me the, even, even, even did a video of it. And the bird's still there. The video, the bird, let him video him. <laughs> that bird say, I ain't going nowhere. I have an assignment. You understand? He then, he probably shoot a bird, chase the bird. Probably throw rocks at the bird. The bird say, yeah, I stand right here because I have an assignment. I've been sent here. There are people that are being watched right now. They're being watched. In the name of Jesus, he said, I don't know how much more I can take of this. I don't know how much more I can take. Because I, this bird is watching me all the time. Every time I turn around, this same stupid bird my, right there, the same bird right there with one, one leg up, one leg up, one leg up there looking at me inside the eyes. And I rebuke him. He looking at me like, yeah, that's all right. I <laughs> can stay right here. Huh? Because there are some kind that does not go to except with prayer and fasting. There are some serpents you're dealing with. You pray them same prayers. They look at you, they laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly. They're stubborn. They're stubborn, iron like. Because they are seasoned, they are veteran, they are they have hard shells, they have hard armor, and they will not go out. That's why the disciples asked Jesus why we couldn't cast out the demon of the child. The Lord says, Because because there's a kind that that you ain't get rid of them just like that. You have to get rid of this kind through prayer and fasting. And you have to make sure that you are spiritually in relationship and covenant. Amen? Look at the sons of Sceva. All right? Let's be real now. They call him sons of Sceva. Or the sons of Belial. Or the sons of the worthless one. All right? They try to cast out spirits in. Right? <laughs> And the and the and, and, and the God of Paul who preached, you know, that in the name of in the name of the Jesus that Paul preached, all right. They never say her. <laughs> they can test your authority. They will test your authority for you to grow in God. They will test your authority. You cannot be able to sit at the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You have to choose the Lord. Amen. You cannot drink from the cup of devils and the cup of the Lord. Make up what you want to do. Make up your mind. All right. So you will be tested. And they, these scorpions and spiders will come. It's only a matter of time. All right? Just make sure that you are blameless before the Lord. And if you're not, say, God, help me quickly. Lord, I know you're doing something I shouldn't do. Forgive me. We all, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. It's only by God's grace and mercy that we, even some of us, exist in here. And if the enemy had his way, thank God for our great high priest, the necessity of our soul, the bishop of our soul, the confessor of our soul, that is fighting for us. Amen? Even now, he still is not sitting down. Yes, he's sitting down at the right hand of the Father, but he also is the high priest of our our confession, amen, and ever lives to make intercession for us. And it's because of that, a lot of things that happened to us has not happened to us because of Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I'm telling you right now, guys, God is raising up a group of people 
that will you will hit them and they'll say yeah and keep on moving. I remember one time I was telling I was telling someone about someone who I thought who I thought I could beat back in the day when he was younger, right? And the guy said, "Let's fight." I say, "Okay, let's fight," because I said, "Man, I could take this guy, right?" And he was a pretty boy, you know. He's bright skin, you know. He had curly hair, long hair. And I said, "Man, I could beat him, man. He's, you know, he's, he's looking like a mama's boy." And so I jump him, man. I jump him quick. Bam! I hit him. I hit him. I hit him. You know, give him, give him a hard punch. Bam! The guy looked at me, shake his neck, and start laughing. I say, "Oh Lord, I'm in trouble." <laughs> I said, "I'm in trouble." We were, we were young kids, you know, 15, 14, there about. I said, Lord, this man look at this man looked at me and laugh. Laugh. You hear me? And then we started to get in it. And listen, this man dragged me all through the all through the grass. He dragged me all through the grass, tear up my shirt, tear up my pants, you know. Uh thank God someone came and, and was saying, Hey, what y'all doing? <laughs> and that guy <laughs> Yes, because I underestimated him. And I didn't realize how strong he was, even though he looked like that. Every time I see this guy, I run from him after that. Then I have to buy him stuff. Hey, you want a cup? You want icing? You want to play on my team? Because <laughs> this dude was, he was, he was just terrifying, man. He was terrifying. In, in a handsome way, he was handsome. All the girls like him. And was able to just beat me like a, like a rag doll. So I recognize that there's a kind you don't mess with unless you are fasted and prayed up. There's a kind you need to be careful with. There's some people you shouldn't you shouldn't even uh, say nothing to. There's some people that you don't want to cross unless God has done this thing. Amen. You don't want to go pick fight with the wrong people. You don't want to offend the wrong people. Amen. And if you do, go say sorry. Please, I'm sorry. All right. I, I, you know, I don't want to trouble because there's some people that they just they just they just anointed by the devil to speak curses on you. You hear me? There's some people with their mouth they can do that. So you don't want to offend them. Now, if they come at you, that's fine. Then God will deal with them, amen? But do not allow your mouth to get you in trouble. Do not allow your mouth to, 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 to try to catch a check that it can't. You way out of your pay, pay grade. Know your level, amen? Some fights you got to walk away from. Some fights you can say, listen, I'm coming back to you at a later date. That's why God didn't allow the children of Israel to fight every battle. He had to take them around the place because some of the enemies were too strong for them. He had to strengthen them and give them smaller enemies to fight and give them victory and give them confidence and, and teach them the, the, the art of war, all right? And to get their spirit man built up and built up and built up and then he sent them at them again. Huh? Some people you just don't come out like that. You hear me? They are principalities and powers in position. And you've offended some some of you have offended great men and great women. Alright? When I say great, that don't mean they're good. They just they just powerful. Alright? And you yourself are not ready for that type of battle. Amen. God is not trained in the wilderness like he trained David. You've not killed your tiger, I mean your your lion and your bear yet. You don't kill the wolves. You've not been trained yet for that. Amen? You need to go and let God train you first. All right? Let God train you first. And then, and then, when God has trained you, He will orchestrate the fight. He will push you in the fight. He will push you in the fight. He will cause this thing to come up so He can judge them. Do you know sometimes God puts you in a fight? And sometimes you hear words coming in your mouth, you even know where the words coming from? Because God wants to send judgment and He wants them to pick a fight with you. He wants them to come at you because He wants to judge them and He wants to show them just how big he is. Because he always favors the underdog. He always is with the small man. He always is in the minority. God is never in the majority. He's always with the remnant. Are you a remnant? Huh? Are you a soldier? Are you a soldier in the army of God? Can you take a licking and keep on ticking like Timex? Are you going to cry every day, all day? And blame everybody else but you? Blame the prophet, blame that one, blame this one. You know, when people come to me and blame me for their own problems. I said, listen, you need to take accountability over your mouth and your actions. I, yes, I spoke the word over you. But once God opened the door for you, you now have to maintain that. Yes, I call for the marriage. But you have to now maintain your marriage by following the marital laws, by fighting for your marriage, by praying over your marriage, by praying over your loved ones, by praying over your husband and praying over your wife. You need to now maintain that and not step out and do foolish things and allow the enemy to use you. All right? We've got to take responsibility. And that's why a lot of people can't grow. They fail to take responsibility for their own action. They fail to take responsibility for the thing they did. Yes, I messed up. Yes, I shouldn't have said that. Yes, I let my ego get the best of me. Yes, I felt some sort of thing against the person. And I spoke against them and I shouldn't have. Never let it be said that you spoke something nasty about a person without cause. Amen? Never let it get back that you was talking about a person 
without cause. Sometimes we incur the wrath of God, and the, the Lord have to say, "Listen, Satan, they, 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 you know, go ahead, go ahead, because it's right. All right, we need to watch our tongue. Lord, let this thing in my mouth called the pig tornado be brought under. Lord, put a watch over my tongue, put a watch over my mouth. Lord, teach me what to say. Amen. God, let me not say the wrong things to the wrong people. Lord, God, let me speak as oracles of God." Because I could just one day praise a person and the next day castigate them and cast them down and speak evil against them. You don't want to be that double-minded person. You don't want one day speak blessing the next day you speak curse. Be instant in season. Let your yea be yea and let your nay be nay. All right? Anything other than that is evil. All right? Learn to speak and declare what the Lord says. Amen? Even when they speak evil of you, you don't speak evil over them. All right? You, you, don't, you don't say nasty things about them. You take it to God in prayer. You let the Lord judge, amen? You don't have to fight every battle by words, amen? Then they say another word to you. Then you say another word to them. Then they come back. Then they come back. Then they come. Before you know it, you're getting guns for each other. All right? <laughs> Before you know it, you're getting sticks. You see what happened? That mouth, that mouth, the enemy knows how to use their mouth in a negative sense. He knows how to use your mouth to bring death, all right? And not life. He knows how to use your mouth to cause your death because he wants you to get mixed up. He wants you to say, you say, and I say. Don't get caught up in that stuff. Let them do that if they want to. You say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you know, let the Lord land. Let the Lord deal with that. Amen? God bless you. God bless you. Keep it moving because you're not fighting with flesh and blood. They want you to get caught up in issues. They want you to get caught up in drama. They want you to get entangled in these things because the enemy is trying to get you mixed up so you can lose focus. But you stay the course. When they was, when they was, uh, when they was coming against Christ, I, I, and they was they were just I mean just just accusing him of everything. He was silent before his accusers. Huh? He was interrogating him. And he said nothing before them. Amen. And he was a king. He was a lion in the presence. At any point in time, he would call down 12 legions of angels to, to just decimate them. Amen. But he didn't do it. It shows strength and power harnessed in stillness and in quietness. Amen. Even if you're quiet and you're a fool, people will think you're smart. Sometimes be silent and be quiet. Don't always say what you're doing. Don't always tell everybody about all the blessings you have in all the time. It's a time and a place for that. But sometimes we give the enemy ammunition and wonder why we're being attacked. I was telling the young lady, stop doing that. And every week she getting attacked. She feel like dying. She feel like this. She feel like that. She telling everybody all her business. <sighs> Correct. I despise that he, that he says, she say, yes, I know I'm going to God about your mess. And walk away. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That that in itself takes away from your from your from your spirituality because it brings you into that fleshy ego, uh, 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 carnal thing. I say this. You say that. I say this. I say this. You say this. The one who's bringing it to you, they also have a bone to pick with you. The one who's bringing it to you, they also said their five cents. Do you know that? You bringing me what they say, but what have you said as well? Now you take in what I say and you carry it back to them because you want a bone. So what you're doing is you're acting as the middle man to heat the fire up, to stroke the fire. So now when it gets so intense, there's a fight. Have you ever been in school when someone say, the first one hit the rock on my hand, you, you throw the first punch? They say, I don't have nothing to say about that. You know, I don't have nothing to say about that. Thank you, Jesus. I live in God's hand. Let God vindicate me. Let God fight this battle. Uh, yeah, that's all you say. You're a whip. That's all you say. Boy, if I was you, I'd go there and tell a piece of my mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything is God. Everything is Jesus. Yes, everything is Jesus and everything is God. And yes, I will let God fight these battles. I will allow God to defend me. Uh, because me, myself, listen, listen, I'm nothing without God. I'm nothing without God. I'm nothing without God. Only God can help me. Only God can preserve me. Only God has me covered. Only the Lord himself. All right? And yes, Yes. Yes, it's called hot potato. That's right. Hot potato and hot rocks. I remember that in school. And I had to hate that because I know, I said, oh God, look at it. They, they, they put me up to fight again. Oh God, I ain't really want to fight now. But the Lord said, you know, your ego, your pride. See, that's what happened. Ego and pride now. Oh, you know, and, and but look at you know, the pretty girl watching. <laughs> pretty girl can watch you get, get a whooping. <laughs> you better be smart. So true, I said it this morning. Be wise. As a serpent, but harmless as a dove. <coughs> I see a, a, a snake. They know when to pick the battles, you know. You think a snake doesn't come and fight you just like that? A snake doesn't watch you. A snake doesn't look at you. A snake doesn't know your movements. A snake watch your strength. A, a snake doesn't try you and test you. You don't even know you've been tested and tried. Right? A snake that 
compile all kinds of information for you. When that snake strikes, that's what they call it cold blooded killers. Because they've been uh, they've been they've been they've been they've been stalking you, they've been they've been following you, they've been watching you, they've been monitoring you, and now when they strike, they strike with intention and they strike with with with, with, with bad will because they already done did all their homework and now they are ready to tackle you. Yeah, snake will run until he get all the intel on you. Yeah, he'll run until he can find you and sneak you. Alright? Jump from out a tree. Strike you suddenly and move. Strike you suddenly and come back and devour you. See, you got to learn the art of warfare. Ain't everything you fight, and uh, uh, you fight with your words, verbally. You fight that on your knees. Huh? You're talking about your ministry? You take it to God in prayer. Amen? At the end of the day, let's see who can stand and who can fall. You praying against me? You have your whole church praying against me? You have your whole church praying against me? You you think that it can work? Keep trying it. Keep trying it. Watch what happen. Huh? Yeah, there are people who have their whole church praying against the people of God. You and you, the man or woman of God, what you doing? What are you doing? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anyhow, I just want to say, God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I will see you real soon. Amen. And uh, I love you all. Um, I want you guys to know that if you've not gotten the book. The spit of the snail, you need to get it. So you can find it. I just was praying the prayers in this book. <laughs> I just prayed the prayers in this book. Breaking the power of the spirit of the snail. Breaking the power of the spirit of the snail. Destroying the spirit of the snail over your life. Amen. I want you guys to get this book. All right, if you've not put this in your arsenal, get it in your arsenal. Amen. It's a very powerful book. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Prophet, Prophet Mama Kio, and all attendants. Blessed and prosperous weekend ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you to Wani. Amen. We're praying for you, Wani. Hallelujah. We're praying for you, woman of God. Thank you for Carrie Ann. God bless Carrie Ann. Carrie Ann always puts up the stuff for us. Thank you so much, Carrie Ann. I bless God for Carrie Ann in the season. Amen. I bless God for all of you in attendance. I love you all, and we will continue to talk later on. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you real soon. Amen. Amen. God bless.